Did you know 5G in the U.S. is not as good as 5G elsewhere? Really? Could, yeah, 5G in the U.S. only averages 51 megabits per second. Uh, can't, yeah, yeah. Lame. Blah. Can't do anything with that. Uh, it's obviously an upgrade over 4G, but yeah. there's a lot of reasons for this. Very comprehensive right up here. Ars Technica, shout out. Uh, main thing here has to do with the type of 5G, Will. There's different types. Yeah, it's different millimeter wave and and uh, frequency and all the rest of it. When you got the low frequency, Will, well, the bandwidth suffers, but it tra you know, you go long distances, obstructions don't bother it as much. Once you get to the millimeter wave stuff, concrete walls and things, you have smaller networks, but they're faster in those smaller, within those smaller areas, you get less reach. Hmm. So Verizon has some killer numbers, but a tiny 5G network as a consequence of it. So they can only advertise in certain places. But you hop onto Verizon, you can get up to 500, right around 500 oh. megabits per second. Anyway, they uh, they checked out a number of different places. You're, you're going to be happy to know that Canada produced a 4G average of 60 megabits per second, the same as the American 5G, oh. or better than the American 5G. And then the 5G average was 178.1 megabits per second. That's great. So not too bad. In fact... Close to Taiwan and Australia at 200 megabits per second. And then, as you know, as it would be, South Korea and Saudi Arabia clocking in at 312 and 414, respectively. So you want to take a trip right now. I know it's limited. You will have to wear a mask. But you want to go experience some 5G, Willie Do. You are welcome to. Right on. So you have a graph here. You have the U uh, USA, the Netherlands, Germany, whatever. Canada kind of surprised me on this front. I don't, I don't know if we've been competitive in the past, but it kind of surprised me on his front. But here, let me give you a little breakdown on the 5G speeds here. The modest 5G download speeds in the U.S. are due to a combination of the limited amount of new mid-band 5G spectrum that is available and the popularity of low-band spectrum, T-Mobile's 600 megahertz and AT&T's 850 megahertz, which offer excellent availability and reach, but lower average speeds than the 3.5 gigahertz mid-band spectrum uses the main 5G band in every country outside of the U.S. Now, if you scroll scroll down to the next chart here, by the way, all this data via open signal, so another shout-out, secondary shout-out. Look at Verizon's number, almost 500 megabits per second compared to T-Mobile, AT&T, and Sprint, which are all close between 50 and 60. However, nowhere near the availability because of the technology in play. As mentioned, uh, the Verizon's 5G network is tiny by comparison, and it relies on millimeter wave frequencies that are easily blocked by walls and don't mm. travel too far. So you see how this, its benefits, its drawbacks, will you do? But either way, uh, there you go. 5G is not 5G everywhere. There is a huge variety of 5G. So maybe it's best to see what you're actually going to get on your carrier and in your region to see if it's just a, some marketing thing or if, it's actually going to, you're going to see a significant improvement in your bandwidth or not based on your carrier and your location. You could check that out for yourself.